Hi guys, it's Mrs. Stevens here to wrap up circles. Last day, unit six. So here's the, I mean day six. Here's the warm up. Um, if you have Mrs. Simons, then you're going to do this a little bit differently than if you have Mrs. Stevens. So the question is, what's the length? Length is another word for distance. So if you have Mrs. Stevens, you're doing the Pythagorean theorem. From three to seven is four away. From negative one to zero is one away. So you're doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and you figure out the distance is the square root of 17. If you have Mrs. Simons and you're doing the distance formula, okay, then you're putting in negative 1 minus 0, 7 minus 3, you're also getting the square root of 17. Okay, equation of a circle. So as soon as you see the phrase equation of a circle, you're looking at your reference card, looking up the equation of a circle. I guess the thing to watch out for is the radius has to be squared. So here the radius is 3, so I need to end in a 9. And then don't forget that it's minus h hk is the coordinate of the center. So x minus a minus 5, this should be x plus 5. Okay, and y minus 6. Alright, another ratio question. So remember the way you handle ratio questions is the ratio of the measures of the angles of quadrilateral are 4 to 5 to 7 to 8. So you put x's in there as a scale factor. You know that the angles in a quadrilateral add to 360. That's on your formula sheet. You add these 4, 5, 7, and 9 together, you're going to get 24. That tells you the x is 15. And um, the question is not what is x, so don't fall for that. The question is largest angle. So 8 times 15. All right, keep reviewing for this final. You're going to do you're going to do well. All right. Last circle theorems. Okay. So, I think there's two more. Sorry about the background noise. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in the hallway. Um, two more um, final circle theorems. So, this is I think we said there was 14 theorems or something. This is number 13 and 14, approximately. All right, so a secant segment. So a secant segment crosses through the circle once. Okay, so remember a secant line is a line that crosses the circle twice. Hold on a second. This is Pelkey and her baby in the hallway. So, um, and if the secant line goes outside, you call it an external secant segment. So, like this BE is outside, but it's touching. And AB is inside. Okay, and AE is the whole secant. The tangent is just touching the circle. So this guy, DE, is just touching the circle. All right, so if you have these two segments crossing outside the circle, whether it's a secant secant or a secant tangent, you have two different theorems. All right, and again, we're going to be multiplying lengths. But in this case, we're going to multiply the whole segment. Okay, so the whole segment is AE. Multiply it by just the outside piece, which is BE. And that'll be the same as this whole segment, CE, multiplied by hit its outside piece, which is DE. Really random, I know. <laughs> whole times outside, whole times outside. 
That's how you memorize it. Whole times outside, whole times outside. All right. Now, what if it's a tangent line? Look at the second picture. Well, for the secant, you've got the whole, which is AE, and the outside, which is BE. But for the tangent, the whole thing is DE, but the outside part is also DE. So it's still whole times outside, but it's the same thing twice. So you can write it as squared. All right, I think an example will definitely, definitely help you here. OK, so here's a picture. You have four pieces. <laughs> you have the whole thing, okay, which is 12. So whole times the outside has to equal, and then this one you have whole, which is x plus 6, whole times outside, and the outside six. Okay, so this is whole times outside, and this is whole times outside. All right, then you can just do this algebra. That's 48, distribute, minus 36 on both sides, divide six on both sides. So the x is two. Oops. And Q, I'm supposed to write that there. The whole thing is 12. And NS, that whole thing will be an 8 because 6 plus 2. Okay, whole times outside, whole times outside. All right, here's another example. So here's the whole, 9 and 9. Here's the whole, Z plus 8. So whole times outside, whole times outside. All right, I know I'm writing the 8 here in front just because I want to remember, I want you to remember to do the distributive property there. So I'm writing it in the front. Oops. Z minus 60. No, 8z plus 64. 18 times 9, 18 times 9, 162. Minus 64, minus 64. 98. Divide by 8, divide by 8. You get 12. Point. So the Z is 12.25. VT, the whole thing, is 12.25 plus 8, which is 20.25. And VW is that whole one, which is 18. All right, two more, just to get the idea of it. So look at this number three. You've got the whole, which is 16. So whole times outside. And on the second part of it, the whole piece is x. So you've got whole times outside. All right. So x times x, x squared. Square root both sides. So you get x equals 8. All right, it's still whole times outside, whole times outside, but the whole and the outside are the same, so you're multiplying it by itself, and that's what it means to square it. Okay, another one. Whole thing here would be y plus 6. So whole times outside. Is there going to be any question on from you guys about what's outside? No, you'll know the 6 is outside, right, because it's outside the circle, so that's the outside part. So whole times outside whole times outside. So this is 6y plus 36. This is 81. Subtract 36 over. Get 45. Divide by 6. 7.5. Alright, and those are our last two theorems. We are done with the circles.
I think you've got practice. Yeah, you've got classwork for day six, and you've got homework for day six, and it's a lot of final exam review. Next class will be a review of all things circle. See you later.